The All Star Factory in Thurso opened in 2001 as part of a redevelopment that included a two screen cinema, a bowling alley, bar, a restaurant, and games hall. It closed in 2009, leaving Inverness as the closest cinema. Following a social media campaign and overwhelming support at a public meeting in June 2012, the Thurso Cinema was formed and that section of the building was reopened in July with a 10 year lease. Since July, over 25,000 customers have attended the cinema and it is clear with a youthful and dynamic local team that the business will thrive. Return on investment is anticipated to be 100% in year one. Plans are afoot to digitise and 3D enable the cinema and to provide satellite links, thereby broadening scope and usage. We are also aiming to redesign and reopen other parts of the building to create a digital entertainment centre with a head office in Thurso and to roll out to other rural communities. This place was in a sad state um, before Rob came along um, and it hadn't had support in the past so that's why it really collapsed. Um, but I think uh, Rob went about it in the right way by actually consulting the community um, and getting them on board before he started his plans. We think um, community infrastructure is, is as important as economic infrastructure. Having social places for people to go just makes any community an attractive place to live and work and attract people into. Uh, what impresses me the most is a the organisation uh, with Rob. It's, uh, it's always well organised, but with the projection booths, uh, the screens, they look wonderful. And also, you've got a college across the road. I noticed, so you've got a thousand students um, who are just sort of ready to go to the cinema, ready to eat, and ready, hopefully, to actually do some sort of education uh, work here as well. I think it's fantastic. Uh, Rob and ourselves and many others have worked hard to, to secure this and it's great to see the community really backing Rob's venture. Rob's demonstrated that the model works here and if it works here in a difficult place like there's a difficult economic background, if it works here there's no reason why we can't make it work in other similar communities across Scotland. It isn't just about what we provide to our customers, it's about how we behave as a business. So, me, for the team, we should give local people the first chance to see a film, as we do with Kids Club, first employment opportunity in the industry, first opportunity to reach out into their own communities to work on projects, which we try to set, and initiatives that will serve them well for the future. Three years ago, um, we got letters to all the groups um, to come to a meeting that there was a possibility of funding a development officer. But we had to get down to brass tacks and say, right, first of all, we need to get a group and get a, a, an anchor organisation to employ the development officer, you know, and take it from there. About um, was it a year and a half ago. Yeah, just, a year and a half ago, um, we employed Paul. We were very mindful that when we made the transition from what was then a development group to realise the development plan priorities which was the, the, the extensive community consultation that was undertaken yeah. to prioritise those ideas for the community and develop them further we to actually take those uh, projects forward and to be realised as assets, community owned assets we needed to move from a development group, constituted group to a company limited by guarantee with charitable status uh, and also registered with the, uh, the Ministers for Section 34 of the Land Reform Act, the community right to buy. The development trust was then formed 
uh, and it was very important that the development trust was there for the community mm -hmm. to actually own the assets on their behalf to be held in perpetuity for them. We need to generate income to sustain a post, whether it be part-time or full-time in the future. We need to make sure that we have fulfilled what the community consultation highlighted. So some of the, some of the projects that, that we're currently, uh, we've actually streamlined within the development plan and priorities is the likes of uh, affordable housing, because there's not been any in Helmsdale for 35 years. So we undertook a housing survey needs uh, analysis uh, back in early 2011. So we went down the design team route and our, our top project cost is in excess of £600,000. Um, and we've done all our fundraising ourselves through our applications to um, other charities, uh, organ uh, public body organisations, even, even higher contributed uh, just short of uh, £80,000 to actually finish the project up and realise it. Mm -hmm. But it's more than just money. Um, it will provide an income of around about fourteen to £16,000 a year to the Trust. Um, it will provide four affordable homes and there's also three self-built plots that have been sold as well which the cost of the, uh, the monies from those plots will actually go into directly into the construction cost. So to my right, which is to the west, uh, we have a fence line where the existing playground is, and that boundary will, uh, uh, will remain. And coming, moving this way to the east will be two uh, semi-detached two-storey units, and sort of directly behind me will be two uh, single-storey uh, two-bedroom units. And further to the, uh, to, to the east side, on my left, will be um, three um, self-build uh, plots, uh, which I mentioned before, the, the cost of which is will, uh, will go directly into the construction of the four, un uh, four units here. Uh, one of our biggest achievements is we're actually in the process of a second stage application for the petrol station uh, with the big lottery fund. And that's been in the, a year in the making to ensure that we got the right petrol station for the future. Um, we actually supported High in hosting a petrol station seminar back in March in 2013, which is very well attended, looking for other communities who were aspiring to what we were doing um, to actually uh, get come together, get information from statutory bodies such as Trade and Standards, Petroleum Officers, uh, Manufacturers uh, and whatever. I think the relationship between High and, and the Development Trust or the Development Group as it was then we, we, was in a very, uh, it was a very uh, embryonic yeah, stage yeah. and it's actually grown and grown for both organisations and I think I've learnt a lot from dealing with communities at, at such, such a close uh, and so, uh, t together and whatever mm -hmm. but support I've provided over the last sort of couple of years has been absolutely mm -hmm. it's, been, it's been top notch really. The problem here is a lot of people are older or we have younger you know and we're trying to revitalise it so we get the middle group you know and the working group people back to the village and the reason to stay in the village you know, so um, we're hoping that when all our projects happen, basically a lot of them next year, that it will create more interest and we'll get more support from them. But it has been encouraging. But it's not a case of sitting in, in, in this office and uh, sort of working away on typing up reports or applications and whatever. Uh, it's a case of actually going out into a community, engaging with the community and finding out what, what they're really thinking. Even if it's only having a cup of tea with the old days on the way to the shop or uh, you know, <laughs> I'm going to chat on the street corner with them and, and uh, uh, you know, Back to but it's not just the old days, it's the younger people as well because uh, yes, 20% 20, 20 of our population is over the age of 60 and we're a population of 848, we've got a 120 square mile community area, so quite outside the village centre it's quite sporadic and whatever. It. So it's very important that the youth are involved um, and there's various initiatives and we're working with other organisations in the community such as Timespan. Timespan uh, was established as a heritage centre in 1986. Um, it started off as a small group of volunteers who were interested in preserving the local heritage. And since then, the business has grown to a cultural centre um, that has national relevance and importance. We had a big uh, redevelopment in 1996 when the cafe and the gallery were added on, and another one in 2007 where the whole centre was redeveloped and a new programme was also set up. Um, for the last few years, we've been um, looking into a curatorial programming of bridging, bridging arts, heritage and community. And since then, uh, we've started developing this into future plans um, with a more integrated approach where the cultural aspect comes to the fore. 
We've made a cultural audit of all the groups that we have here and astonishingly for a place of 600 people we have over 20 community groups who we're actively working with. HIE has supported us over the years and uh, we are very grateful for HIE's support. Um, most recently uh, we've received funding for our endowment project, our endowment appeal, which has started around about a year ago. Uh, we've also received funding for uh, changing the lighting in our gallery to attract a new audience and to update the system to make it relevant to national standards but also um, to confirm with our green policy. Uh, we've also um, generously got some support for training over the last few years which has helped us to develop our customer service and most recently um, HIE has supported uh, the Translocation Festival which was a great success. We have a lot of services and facilities here um, and first of all um, we feel that it's very important to have uh, all of those for the local community and also for all our visitors, which are around 13,000 per annum. Um, we have genealogy uh, research, we have uh, obviously a cafe and a shop, um, things to generate income. And most recently we have developed a virtual world in collaboration with St. Andrews University, which is a three-dimensional uh, immersive environment that the visitor to our museum can see. As part of the Translocation Festival um, we have been redeveloping uh, the displays in our museum to make them more relevant for the clearances and it is a new approach where the visitor comes into time span and will be allocated a character. So as a visitor you for example, you are the Countess of Sutherland or Catherine McPherson, one of the tenants from the townships. And you can go around the museum looking at the story of these people um, from their perspective. We are not just about preserving the past, but we are also shaping the future. And that really is our role within the community. Northlands uh, is a charity which was um, really set up by Robert McLennan, our uh, then uh, MP, and uh, Dan Klein, who was a director of uh, Christie's, uh, an expert in glass and ceramics. We are a centre of excellence and we are now regarded as one of Europe's principal centres of excellence, if not one of the world's principal centres of excellence. And uh, we run classes, master classes for professional glass artists led by the world's leading glass artists and uh, HIE have uh, helped with um, the um, refurbishment of uh, this gallery and the, the studio and also in um, uh, providing equipment for the studio. And they are currently helping with, uh, we're just coming to the end of a three year development uh, where they've helped with some equipment we have had a new furnace down in our studio, which is also much easier to, to run energy saving. Um, they've helped us with low energy lighting and we now have solar panels on our roof to, to heat our water. So that has, has helped greatly. And also for the appointment of an Innovations and Business Development Director, who's helping with future funding and uh, developing Northlands to where it is now and hopefully into the future. They helped fund the CBD course that we had with the teachers and also some of the outreach that we've had. We go into to primary schools and high schools, they come along and spend some time in the studio. Uh, we also have community projects with for local art groups and uh, just general members of the public. Not only does it bring people into the studio but they, they also are coming into the area with their families, those that are coming from, from a distance. For the community projects, um, as I say, it's, it's, it's taking it into the schools and giving them an opportunity. We would like to um, uh, have additional help with uh, marketing, cataloguing of our programme uh, and um, generally assisting in the, the running of uh, Northlands and we are, are um, uh, considering uh, the graduate placement scheme to see whether we could get uh, someone to come in and um, for a year uh, to get this going.
I think it'd be very much to, to develop the archive for novels because you know, we do have all these pieces and we, you know, there's a story behind each one and it would be good to be able to collect all that information and uh, because otherwise it'll be forgotten.